Ladies and gentlemen, we just found out that the Green Bay Packers will be picking up Snacks Harrison. Um, that was a question. We knew that there was interest. Um, and it was kind of lingering out there. It felt like one of those things that wasn't going to happen. But at the same time, you knew that Gutekunst was picking up the phone. I think the bigger question really was, did Snacks want to come here? Uh, there was some thinking that maybe he didn't want to come. Um, really rare situation. Usually the Packers pick people up and I'm the guy that runs out and says, look, this is stupid. I said that about Christian Kirksey. Like, maybe not stupid, but you guys are way over hyping this. Um, generally, that is that is my role. Today, it seems like most people are saying, I don't know about the Snacks Harrison thing. And I'm saying, no, this is, this is kind of awesome. Um, things weren't super great in Detroit. Let's, let's start there. So prior to Detroit 2018, dominant run defender, right? Michael Pierce, whatever, those, those types of guys. Nose tackle, 353 pounds, dominant run stuffing type of, of defensive tackle. Not providing a ton by way of pressures. For example, 2018, 15 pressures on 310 attempts. So we're talking about 5% of the time. But again, that's what you get from a nose tackle. That's fine so long as he can execute stopping the run and whatnot. Um, so he goes to Detroit. He does not have a great year. Um, leaves Detroit and kind of just lays it out there that he wanted to get out badly. He did not want to be there. So then he's kind of floundering out there, and that always kind of makes you nervous because you know he's a talented player, and maybe just the way things happened in Detroit, not only did he not play as well, not only is he 32 years old, but, you know, he's kind of walking around like, yeah, you know, I didn't really like, you know, I'm guessing teams don't really like it when guys start trashing the team they just left. Like, you don't want to bring the guy in. Things don't go well. He starts talking about you. And you I'm just, just thinking through why he's floating out there. Um, so Seattle finally picks him up. And kind of a weird situation where he just kind of sits and he's not playing very much. Finally, he starts getting some playing time. And I'm, I'm literally on the podcast probably two days ago saying they did a good thing because he is the number eight overall run defending defensive tackle in the NFL right now. Um, not that he's always been very good. I mean, it's a small sample size, but it's consistently been getting better. He had a 90 overall grade against the Jets. Granted, it's the Jets, but still um, overall 81.7. He's, he's good at it, and he's better than anyone that the Packers have, and he's doing a better job than everybody except seven people in the NFL. So clearly, even though maybe we're saying he's not 2018, 2017, 16, 15 snacks Harrison, he's a talented guy. And then he leaves Seattle. Um, there's a lot of different ideas about what's going on with snacks Harrison. Um my interpretation is not what other people's interpretation is. A lot of people are saying he's not getting in shape. He's not doing his job. And so Seattle didn't want to put him out there. From Snacks' standpoint, it, my understanding is he's saying, look, I want to play. And Seattle's like, yeah, we'll see. And he's like, no, no, I want to play. Put me on the field. And he's like, no, 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 we'll see. And at some point, he's like, look, I'm not doing this. I'm out, right? So he leaves. If you're not going to play me, I'm out of here. So he's floating around out there, and um, based on a couple things I saw on Twitter, it sounds like, and again, I'm just piecemealing different things, and there's a he said, she said kind of thing going on. It sounds like basically he went out and he said, look, there's a short list. There's a couple teams I'm willing to play for if they call me. I'm not doing the whole free agency thing. I'm not just going to get claimed and go play for whoever. Um, basically, I mean, somebody said this on Twitter, and, and Snacks said bingo. In other words, you nailed it. Um he was, there were only a couple teams that knew that he would play for them. The other teams didn't bother calling because he's just going to flat out say no. He's at a point in his career basically where he's saying, look, I'm willing to go to X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, I'm not playing. I have to assume it's not a money thing, right? If it's a money thing, you pick up the, the phone to the, the highest bidder. He wants to play for a contender. I'm just saying, I, I don't know for sure, but he played for the Jets. He played for the Giants. He played for Detroit right? Garbage teams. He's 32 years old. He wants to have a ring. He goes to Seattle because they're a promising team. Seattle starts to fall off. They don't play him enough. He's frustrated, right? Forget this, dude. You don't want to play me and you guys aren't contenders anyways. You guys are, are, are pretenders, <laughs> right? So he walks. And so he's thinking, all right, if, if X, Y, and Z team call, probably Chiefs, Packers, Saints, whatever, teams that have a legit shot, I'm game. Packers are one of those teams. They've maintained interest also this whole time. They call him up. They say, are you ready to go? He says, yes, sir. He's going to come out. He's going to do his physical thing. And, and there's a lot of talk about, I don't know if he's going to suit up. Look, he's a rotational guy. 
he's going to come. He's kind of like Kamal Martin. Um, you know, Kamal's a real talented guy because of the, the way that he gets utilized. It's in certain situations he's situationally used. And when he's used in that way, he executes very, very well. Damon Harrison is not going to be on the field 50 snaps a game, but he is going to be out there probably a lot of first downs, a lot of short third down situations, no pass rushing situations, right? No third and longs. There's going to be goal lines, going to be short yardage, probably some first down mixed in there running type situations, especially against teams like the Bears. Their success is largely coming behind a running back who's really picking up some steam. You smack him in the mouth, you take that all away, which by the way, they did that pretty well to Derrick Henry. But you add in Damon Harrison, it changes that dynamic. And here's the other final thought that I had here. Um, It's not just what Snacks does in a vacuum. How does he impact everything else? What does it do for Mike Pettin to have a guy that sucks up double teams on, on his defense. What does that do for your linebackers in terms of freeing them up to fly around and make tackles? What does that do for a guy like Kenny Clark, who now doesn't have to be the double team guy? He can be the guy where you have to double team snacks and he gets to do the one-on-ones now. What does that do? Um, and I, I talked about that on the podcast as well, Packer, that podcast, if you're not listening. Um, he was a lot better, Kenny Clark was, when, when Mike Daniels is wrong. Very different type, types of guys, Damon Harrison and, and Mike Daniels. But the one thing that they do have in common is that you have to pay attention to them. You had to pay attention to Mike Daniels. You probably didn't want to because Kenny's there, but if you don't, he's going to smack you right in the mouth. Damon is kind of that way. Not that he's going to threaten your quarterback, but if you want to do anything, you better draw some extra attention, especially if you're trying to run the ball. You you got to put two people on him, and Kenny one-on-one is going to kill you. And then that frees up your guys on the edge. That just does so many it, – it has a snowball effect. So I think, and and I don't want to overhype it because there are still some questions along the way, but I mean, we're talking about a Super Bowl caliber team that's really starting to hit its stride. The one thing that has some people concerned is, is the defensive side of the ball. The safeties are really picking it up. Jair is a fantastic corner. The the edge rushers are getting better. If they can just get some talent on the inside, um, that really could just be the final piece for this team whose offense is back to being the number one offense in football. And so this is a pivotal piece for a defense that needs him and a a defensive coordinator that clearly prioritizes defensive tackles that has seen guys like Mike Daniels leave um, other free agents and whatnot that that he's tried to pick up, haven't super panned out. Um, But it's, it's a critically important piece of this defense. Again, not just because of the scheme itself, but the snowball effect around which um, around guys like Damon Harrison. So I'm excited. I I really am. And and if you know me, if you listen to the podcast, I don't just get excited about nothing. I understand he's 32. I understand he's not the same old snacks. I also understand he can still play football. And I understand that he was a very good run defender for the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know exactly what happened. I understand there's some potential issues there. He's got that kind of, I don't care attitude. It's going to be hard to tell him what to do. Um, So it's got that sort of, I, I hate to even say it, that Martellus Bennett vibe, where if things go bad, they can go bad quickly. But it's one of those things, too, where it's like, why not, man? Why not just take a swing at it? If it doesn't pan out, you don't play him and he he leaves and he talks trash about you on Twitter. So what? Let's go get a Super Bowl. 